For beating uh, reporters back if they're asking for records. This is Susan Bassey, and I want to show you how we do investigative audits. And that's where we combine information from social media and mainstream media in order to look at the broader picture. The incident you saw at the beginning of this video involved a nurse who was on her way to work when all of a sudden she was stopped by sheriff's deputies who were angry that she had waited to pull over until some bicyclists passed. She asked for a supervisor. The deputies then pulled her out of the car. And the video where this incident occurred from the dash cam was found to have been edited. And it was edited in a manner to make the police officers look favorable. This is a pattern in practice that especially in Santa Clara County we have seen over and over again where the district attorney repeatedly refuses to prosecute bad police officers and where good police officers are afraid to speak up. And yet this incident is not isolated to just Santa Clara County. And we've been investigating how many counties and how many police officers are involved. And I can assure you that what is coming out in public records pursuant to SB 1421 is only the tip of the iceberg because most of these incidences are not prosecuted by DAs and are not investigated in a manner that the public has any idea about the conduct of law enforcement officers and what is really being done in our criminal courts. But with the help of the new law that requires the release of these records, the help of First Amendment auditors on YouTube, and by getting access to information and records, we can provide better transparency that will bring greater accountability. And we need to start looking at the district attorneys in all of these counties and why police officers who are engaged in excessive force and not following their training and perpetuating these bad cultures are not being prosecuted and held accountable. to molest them in there, <laughs> then we're on the hook, so, yeah. Hey, you know, it'd be a good idea, though, and I think I talked to you about it, I might talk to, I think I talked to, it was either you or Dave, maybe getting a phone line installed in there so we could plug it in so they could talk to them over the phone instead of having to come down here, because when we use our cell phones, they don't dial out. But why do we have to? We have to provide them the ability to talk to them, and that way we don't have to take them out of the interview room. How is it, how is that not, how is that, how is that not privileged information? Well, it is, but like it just doesn't get admissible. <laughs> like when we record it, it just, it's just not admissible. We don't have to record the phone call. Just uh, we're recording. Well, well, I mean, you know what I mean? Like uh, when we've tried to let them ca talk, ca when like we did it. Sometimes a public defender won't come in. They will say, "Oh, I'm at home already." So can you just put them on the phone? And then the phone yeah. we, have, we have to make like 45 phone calls. But if we just had something like a old desk phone like that and run a wire, and then they could just talk to them on the phone. 
we'd still record, but it's it, it's something. It's not. Is there, is there issues? Is there issues with recording? I mean, like, isn't that? Is it with what? Is there an issue with recording? Well, if we record, we just say that it was. Um, it's just something that they can't. It's not admissible. It's privileged there, so they'll edit the tape and like the, the from the time he was put in the room to the time he lawyered up. Uh, it was uh, whatever. He, might have been recorded him talking, whatever he might have said is just privilege and it's not admissible in court. What if it led you to an investigation? Well, we, like, well, hey, we, I put a gun in the fucking backyard and you went back there and found the fucking gun. Well, that's, that would, they would probably make that the inevitable discovery because we would have the asked them. Rule? No, the, the in, in, <laughs> inevitable discovery, which is the, uh, we had the public safety statement, we could ask them when, after they've already lawyered up. Right. So, I, what we've done is like, well, we've, we've had this these recordings, we have not yet listened to any of the recordings with what they said to the attorney. We just uh, start, go out to, to the part where we go in there and then they tell us to, <laughs> my lawyer says not to talk to you and then we, <laughs> and that's it, so. You heard that correctly. The lieutenant in charge of investigations in the sheriff's department, Lieutenant Schallenberg, actually yawned as these two officers were discussing illegally recording juveniles who had been taken into custody and that they were actually knowingly violating attorney-client privilege and obstructing justice and that they would cover their conduct up by editing videos so that nobody would know. And this is consistent with the 2016 memo and email that was a matter of public record and posted on the Santa Clara County website. And I want to show you what investigative reporting looks like. Not the reporting that's on the news every night, but true investigative reporting, which takes a long time, which involves the development of sources and whistleblowers. It includes looking at social media and what's available in the public domain, and it especially includes looking at public records to point to information that the public would want to know. In this case, Lieutenant Schollenberg makes over $352,000 a year in pay, overtime, and benefits. His supervisor, an elected sheriff, Sheriff Ahern, makes over $633,000 a year. That's almost a million dollars a year for this kind of level of work. I'm sorry. They so, one of them probably be in until Monday of next week. So they basically, what, nine to five normal hours? Yeah. Okay. So nobody is in the admin offices for the courts right now either? As of now, no. Okay, they've all gone for the evening? Yeah. Okay. They're, they don't work until 5? Man, it's still the end of a holiday week. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, there's, we get it. We get it. There's been nobody yeah, here. They've been in and out. We get it. Yeah. We get it. We just, I, I understand, but it's still a public day. day. And it, and I have right. I have news deadlines okay. that so far nobody's able to give me the records we're on. And so, yeah. you know. Are, are, are they sheriff's office records? Yes. Okay. All right. You okay? What happened? What happened to your leg? No, it's just for grabbing. For be for beating uh, reporters <laughs> back if they're asking for records. <laughs> okay. So tell me, you got this off the website? For yeah, Senate? off the website. Um, and page two has links to, and you can see page two once you go there. Information that actually. Oh, no, no, no. Is this is this about the secondary employment? This is, uh, is this general order? Yeah, that's a general order. This is public records, dude. Yeah, this is what public, public records are. So this is San This Francisco. is a standard law when I do the public records all the time. Okay, so what are you showing okay, me on so this? Okay, so not, that's not fun. That's for this one. This is for this one. Don't crash. This is for this one. This is for this one. Seven, seven. <laughs> Okay, so this is the, this is stuff that's um, that's the building that, that we're, we're going, going to. to. Yeah, there. So here you. Go. Oh, put that there. So that's their lobby. Mm -hmm. And if you look at their lobby, um, then that's another view of their lobby, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's, is this on their website? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then okay, so this is their their main page. Uh huh. And then page two had links. Okay. And at the bottom. So if you look at those. Ah, uh, I see it. Their so, oath. Their... So then they have an oath of office, an oath uh -huh. of, for personnel that are. Ooh, canons of police ethics. Okay. Right. All these items here mm -hmm. should be public information. 
Yeah, they are, aren't they? Aren't when they you click on it, it the, goes. You have to have a password to go into that program. Are into you that link. kidding me? No. So that's what I want to go in. I want to get five uh, information. Uh, oh yeah, let's go say we're, we're that's, public records. That's, and I want to. I want. I want f all okay. five of those items. Absolutely. Okay. And remember, okay. So what we go in is there's two differences on a public records request. Okay. Right. The two differences are I'm filming as we go, so that's I can fine. explain it once. The differences are you can make a public records request, right? And that requires 10 days. I see that in these papers, you know, that they have 10 days right. to... Um, Absolutely, but but you, but also if you request to see them on site, they have to promptly show them to you. That's right, that's called access to the records. And then what they have to do is give you access to the records right. and you have a right to have them copied. They may charge you up to 10 cents a page. Sure. They're allowed to do that. Okay. But if it exists in an electronic format or has been provided to another agency in an electronic format, which I absolutely believe it has been, mm -hmm. then you have a right to receive it in electronic format. And what we can do is ask them to download it onto a USB for us. And then there's... Or give us a copy like they, they did in Santa Clara County. Remember right. that? Right. I just have a question. I need some pu access to some public records that the links are broken to on your site, and I was wondering where I go to see those. Uh, I don't know. Check with the press. Okay. Records. Public records that are on your site. There are specific documents listed. Oath of office, oath of office, canons of police ethics. Yeah, you know, I would ask them at the front window. Okay, thank you. That's okay. I have some questions on some uh, public records that I'm looking for. On your website, you have five things listed with links, but the links are broken. And so I'm wanting access to those records because I need to see those. Um, I can show you what's on your website. and One of them is the oath of office for sworn members, oath of office for professional staff, one is for canons of police ethics, one is... Well, here's the thing. It's not available here. Okay, so what I'm what I'm trying to say is, okay. the law says that during normal business hours, I can walk in and view records. I understand what a public records request is that I wait ten days for. I don't want to wait. I want to see what records there are available. These are on your website, but the link requires a password, and they're public records, so there shouldn't be barriers to that access. I understand your request. Can I call someone that you can speak with? Directly? Certainly, that would be terrific. The same person that the email is That's be. certain. Certainly, are they in a different physical location? Uh, they are.
Hi, Judy. It's technician Todd Benitez here. Can I check if you're not in? Um, if you get this message, please call me back right away. Uh, you know my extension. Uh, I'll try to locate someone else in your office. Thank you. Bye-bye. Not too long ago, we had someone come in to make this, a similar request. And she had a conversation with uh, okay. Ms. Mulder. Hi, this is Technician Costco over at ETS. Hi, how are you? Is Judy in today? Oh, is she, I mean, I just called her extension. She's probably on another line. Do you know if she's available to speak with someone um, in our office who's asking about access to an oath of office and similar type public records? I'm just getting pictures. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Um, I also want to clarify, I'm, I'm looking for records related to calls for service to Raw Ranch and SB 1421 records as well, in case that matters with who you're talking to. Hi, Judy. I have someone here um, who's wanting some uh, various public records. job what do they have to hide if they don't have anything to hide wave and say hello and move on go do your job i just uh, want to know where these records are i understand how hard is that people just why is it that they get all twitchy yes i'm sorry 510 hold on i'm going to put it in my phone Five ten two two five nine. Wait, two two five five nine three six. Okay, and his name is Mr. Kelly. What physical okay. address is he at? Uh, and what physical address is he located at? Fourteen oh one Lakeside Drive. Is that in Oakland? And is that in Oakland or what's the city? Okay, so he's not there. So when he's not there or on vacation, where are the records? Who's his backup? I'm calling him. Nobody's answering. But you already knew that. You knew he wasn't Your in today. So who's his super supervisor? System. Okay, then and where do I contact the sheriff right now? Or, or the other sheriff. Okay, I need to keep going up till I get a supervisor who's actually working today and can help me with the record. So where do... You just said he's not in today. How will he call me back? Do, do you have a cell phone for him? Most public information officers give me their cell phone number. Okay, I'll call him back. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all your help. It is a little frustrating for me just getting yeah, my records. I can, I can just imagine, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Was there anything else? No, you've been very kind. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. I suppose this investigation started for me on November 14, 2017, after I told the Santa Clara Board of Supervisors that we would be issuing a report about what was going on in the county's Forced family records. and criminal courts. Immediately after that meeting and my public comment, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies, the same agency that was seen at the beginning of this I, video, I don't, I don't seized want my the phone, I want broke my to hand, the records to and unlawfully what I searched want to my phone. Because I don't know that they I were not all prosecuted by the Santa Clara specific, County District so Attorney. What I'm looking for the District is Attorney the Jeff Rosen instead decided so to prosecute me. There has been over see. seven prosecutors assigned to my case at various times. Unfortunately, I now have a badass criminal defense attorney, a couple of lawyers in the wings, and a number of sources and whistleblowers. And I assure you, we're going to get my records. Oh, okay, so, so we're going to get records in all of these police departments. Okay, so here's and we're the going problem. to also get the it, district attorneys problem, not prosecuting not the police problem. officers it's not, it's just indicted. Something I'm trying to get and that is on. my promise. Is there's a lot of attention.